if you are an estate agent, letting agent, or someone who is interested in the property market, in the direction it's going, then listen up in the next hour, where we will be talking about the stats that matter in the UK property market. The purpose of this show is to show you what's coming in at the top, live stats, what's happening in the property market to houses coming on the market, whether they're being reduced, are they being sold, how many are selling and what sort of properties are falling through. With that sort of information, you will be able to know six or nine months in advance what's going to come out the other end. And that's the purpose of the UK property market stat show. This week, it's week nine, which is Monday, the 27th of February to Sunday, the 5th of March. And I'm joined by back by popular demand, the main man himself, Brian Mansell. Brian, thanks for joining us for a second time on the UK property market stat show. Chris, you're very welcome. I was wondering if popular demand was just you, basically, but uh, it's nice to be back. And I love talking about stats, particularly with you. So I oh, bless you. Bless you. So, right then. So as I said, boys and girls, we are looking at week nine of the property market, which was Monday, the 27th of Feb to the Sunday, the 5th. Shall we dive straight in with the stat runes and go and see where we are, my friend? So we're kicking off, as always, with new instructions or as estate agents like to call them, listings, okay? And we start off with the numbers, okay? So this week we have uh, 34,369 properties that have come onto the market. Whilst you just talk about that, whilst I just bring up the rest of the stats so I can compare and contrast with the rest of the week. Yeah, well, I remember when we looked at this um, a couple of weeks back, it, it was an encouraging start to new listings for everybody, really. And I think that's consistent with what is being reported af- across the industry news, isn't it? That, <clears throat> you know, there's more sellers coming back to the market now than there were, obviously, this time last year. And, um, you know, the market is getting going back towards, you know, the the pre-pandemic levels, hopefully. Um, and as we go move into the spring, then, of course, that is traditionally the busiest time. So I'd expect those numbers to continue to improve. Uh, to give you an idea of where we stand in the marketplace, the average number of listings for the last running for February was 33,133. So listings are looking, you know, really, really good. What we've got to be careful of, boys and girls, with with regard to listings is, is that when it gets too many, that's when we have an oversupply. And that's what happened in 2008. Everybody dumped their houses on the market. So the, the importance of listings is, if you think about it, because it's a demand and site, demand and supply issue, if that number was up to fifty or sixty thousand, we would we and th- they weren't selling, we would have a problem. Too much stock on the market, not enough buyers, which is what we had in the credit crunch, which is dro- drove, which caused house prices to to drop. So yeah, uh, so far so good. Let's move on to the next slide, and that talks about the number of uh, the price of of the average listing. Now this has been creeping up slightly so the average this month is uh this week is 419,000 the average for the um let's just pull it up the average for the month itself is 419 as well which is quite coincidental um again there seems to be a lot more bigger houses coming on the market I know some people are saying it's overvaluing and for those of you who are not estate agents overvaluing is when an estate agent puts a house on the market at an overinflated price to secure the listing, but no one looks at it, so the property remains on the market and becomes stagnant. What are you hearing? You know, Brian is the boss man of Gazeal, which is a, a firm which helps estate agents and homeowners and home buyers sell properties without sales falling through, uh, which is a big bane of estate agent's life, and we'll come on to fall throughs in a second. Um, any thoughts on this, or should we move on, Brian? Well, Just- yeah, I mean, let's not dwell too long because there's a lot of unanswered questions, and we've said this before. You know, when you look at stats, very rarely do you get the actual answer that you might be asking. Um, what you're looking at here is another level of data to interpret. You know, so there's always two ways to look at the average pricing, and that is that is it the same types of property coming on that agents are pricing higher? If so, that is folly in the market. You know, what have you learned over the market of the last three months? If you're doing that you are going to be basically creating a cost liability on your business that you will then see either withdrawn or going on the market with another estate agent in six to eight weeks time who will then get the price down and sell it. So you're just committing commercial suicide, really. Or is it what you've just said, 
larger, larger, more larger properties are beginning to come onto the market as we go towards the spring, which um, obviously will then inflate the average price. We have, we've got some stats that go some way to answer that. Now, interestingly, I was at a conference uh, last week and um, the, the, there was an old stat from before the lockdown where 60% of houses sold with the second estate agent. In 2021-22, that number went down to around 7%, um, according to 20EA. Uh, but according to Rightmove, that number is now going upwards like a rocket um, and and on its present trajectory, we'll be touching six in ten houses selling with the second agent uh, probably later in the year. That they, I, I just I just can't believe that. Okay, I'm really sorry to be you know the opposite on this, but I I've, I heard that stat, which was a right move stat apparently taken from yes. you know da data that they had on their platform. Um, it has been backed up by Spectre as well. So, you, so we're led to believe that for every ten houses that an estate agent, the estate agent lists in a town, six of them will change to another agent during a period of time. And it'd be interesting to know what period of time it is that makes that change. But that's I mean, crazy. That, that, that's that's, that's, that's that, I've ever had in thirty-five years. Okay, that, that original sixty percent stat was quoted by Rightmove in two thousand thirteen fourteen, which was a different marketplace. I right. don't believe it was updated in the later teams. And again, if anyone from Right Move or Spectre who's watching this has got some more up-to-date figures on that, would be very, very interested. It needs to be that. quantified properly, that, because if that's true, that is a real damning indictment of the quality of care that people are giving their clients. If, you know, 60%, that is a major, major issue. Even if it was half that, I'd be worried. Even if it was 20%, it's a major issue. Um, you would expect some, some people to do it, but it's basically, you know, if you're pricing a property, and you are convincing the seller that your price strategy is correct, and then you don't sell it. Well, then you are going to lose that relationship very quickly if you're yeah. not looking after it. Yeah, but, but you've got to, just, you can't, can't believe that, that happens nationally at that level. I really can't. Um, I think you'll be surprised. I mean, whether it's sixty percent, but I, I do genuinely believe, Brian, that an awful lot of estate agents overvalue because I'm going to make something quite. I'm going to be quite uh, bold. Do you mind if I'm bold? No, let's be bold because I'm being definitely bold today because I'm kind of, you know, I guess like a lot of people in the industry, you know, we get, you know, we get these stats are great because they are undeniable because they are taken from a, a very reliable source. But what I've always tended to found is that the analysis of stats or the interpretation of some of these and some of these things that get banded around and I'm picking up the point you've just made of 60 percent tend to come from people who have a vested interest in that stat being right. OK, uh, yeah, Companies are selling selling you a license to spend money with them so they can send you tout letters is going to say 60 percent of people change. So therefore, you should use our service. And I kind of feel that, you know, we're get it's kind of a bit shovel salesman type of thing here. OK, um, fair goes. Well, as I said, I'm very, very, very happy to be shot down in flames on that. Well, I mean, I mean. Again, a very good friend of mine mystery shopped 25 estate agents, uh, uh, implying that they wanted to move home and they live locally. How many of the 25 do you think actually were offered a free valuation of the house? I, I would be gobsmacked if it was more than two or three. Two. Well, you know, that's I mean, crazy. come on, estate agents. So not you, under 10% of estate agents. I mean, well, it depends, obviously, if the person is in the town that they're actually that the agent's in, because you'd be if that was true. If so, if I'm ringing an estate agent in my town sell, saying I've got a house to sell in my town and two out of 25 asked for evaluation, I'd be ringing their bosses up and shooting them immediately because that's just shocking. I mean, I did some I mean, interesting oh, for, the best, for the best estate agent. This is not the best estate agent, but the best estate agent guy, mystery shop you know hundreds and well thousands of estate agents and you'll be amazed the amount of people that don't actually reply to emails requesting oh, a viewing. Yeah, I know. yeah yeah and, and even evaluation you know honestly i don't know what it is you know and i'm not not we can't tar we're not tarring the industry here i must stress that to you there seems to be a 25 30 percent of the of estate agents who are really really knuckled down they're giving good staff training that they their moot they are that they are pulling away from from the vanilla average. You know, the average fee in a state agency has gone down from one point six in two thousand and six to presently one percent. It's been a steady low, just a, a, a drifting down, and we're not attracting the right sort of people, and we're not retaining the right sort of people. We haven't got enough money in the industry to pay 
for decent people. And, and again, it's, I'm sorry, it's your responsibility of bosses. I hope you don't mind saying this, Brian. It's the responsibility of the bosses to train them and if and get your fees up. So if you can get your fees up, you can bring in better colleague, better colleagues, which means you can offer a better service. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll put you on it. <laughs> it is, you know, you know. I think the point that you've made there is that again, like we said before, stats are there, but they need to be quantified, you know, by accurate sources. Okay, let's come back. So accumulative listings. This is the number of properties that have come onto the market since the 1st of January. And we've this, this is one of these uh, graphs that was requested by people, someone on YouTube. So again, if you've got any graphs or something that you particularly want to are interested in, do let me know. Um, and again, listings quite well and it all in line with other years, really. Nothing yeah. silly. Uh, now, this is a particularly nice. Yeah, in, sorry, just go back one for me. So interesting, if you look at March, if you look at 2020, in this period of time, we weren't yet in the full COVID issues in the middle of March. It was all early March. It was the end of March that we started to get a bit serious yeah. about COVID. So it is interesting that that is technically a pre-pandemic market. Um, and it's interesting that the numbers have got, you know, as we've just said, are going back to a pre-pandemic level, which is really encouraging. Um, someone requested whether we actually put the, the weekly figures um, of listings on a graph and I've compared this with 17 18 and 19 I haven't done 20 because after middle of March it does go into a weird market because of the lockdown um so therefore I'm just comparing it with more normal if there is such a thing as normal years because obviously 17 18 and 19 were brexit on hold years but I think that's the closest we can get to normal if there's something and again there's nothing really of note there that needs to be worried about is there well there is a, there is something of note there to be concerned about but it's not Particularly, you know, it is relevant to estate agency businesses that are looking at these graphs and thinking, wow, the good, the curves are going up. They look like they're matching where the good years, so to speak. Um, but actually, the one interesting stat that will be fundamentally different to all of those, with the exception of the big, thick pink line 2023, is your costs of running a listing, your cost of operating as an estate agent. So it's all really good to sort of pat ourselves on the back and, you know, and pop the balloons and think, yeah, hey, we're going back to the good times, kind of normal market balance. But if you've got 20% increased costs on your business um, and numbers aren't going up, we can see sales coming down a little bit, average house prices get, you know, are where they were, then, um, you know, you need to look at your business model pretty quickly. Well, interestingly, we're going to be coming on to net sales and anyone that doesn't know what net sales are, basically, and it's a pretty crude measurement, but it's a, it's a damn good measurement. Gross sales is the number of houses you sell in a week fall throughs on the number of houses that fall through in that week they don't necessarily fall through in the same week they they because a property sale takes on average 19 weeks and the longer it goes on the more it's more likely to fall out of bed uh but you will have fault sale fall throughs which are absolutely awful um but let's just say you put 10 on that week and you put uh, you have two sales fall through from your sales pipeline that means that you have eight, eight net sales okay and it's just a nice measurement to, to look at let's go back uh brian and look at um um price changes and this is estate agents working their stock okay so the price changes at the moment um you know uh, you know just to give you an idea um there uh, the estate agents have reduced their price on seventy one thousand one hundred and twelve properties um now, in a second, you talk about this whilst I go and find out how many properties there are presently on the market at the moment, just to give you an idea of what percentage stock is being reduced. Well, that's exactly what I was going to um, ask you to do, because obviously, without taking into account the number of sales out of that, if you take the 271,000 listings of the year, 18,473 price reductions, you would expect that the newer listings possibly, and I, again, I might be wrong here, but after a three, four, five week period are the ones that are getting the changes as um, the market begins to unfold for the sellers. Uh, that's only representing a very, very low number of as a percentage um, of. Um, OK, of right. OK, so at the moment, there are approximately five hundred and fifty three thousand properties available for sale in the UK, which means the state agents are uh, working approximately seven or eight percent of their stock in a month. Is that good enough? Yeah, I tell you what would be really handy to have a look at here. And again, maybe you ask your audience to see if there's, you know, other people wanting this or is it just me? And that is to look at, you know, literally two comparative graphs, the number of net sales or gross sales performance against reduced property and unreduced property. So origin price sales versus 
reduced or adjusted price sales. I believe I don't have that data, but I believe Spectre published some data that it, they said is that if a, if an estate agent changed agents, they were thirty percent more likely to sell. But they but then they didn't say whether they, they reduced it at the same time, which again is you know nothing against Spectre, but I, what I would be very interested is if you did a ten percent price reduction at the existing agent versus swapping agent and reducing 10%, which one would have a greater propensity to sell? That would be interesting. I don't, I'm not sure that there's any data out there that would do that. Again, I'm, I might ask my data people to see if that data. Yeah. I mean, the challenge that you've got as an agent is, is, you know, matching the seller, you know, getting the seller's expectation right on the very first time you're valuing and also hoping that that is in a similar line to the other people you're competing with, which in a real world, it's probably not. So you are going to face the majority of time in this type of market, a two to three week period where you've got to work that seller down um, if you're not selling the property, you know, and indeed, and in an and ideal world, we learn from this, the information, as you said, about planning ahead, planning ahead, and we price more accurately at the beginning to win and then sell the instruction without the necessity of a price change. That's good commercial business for the agent. But the reality of delivery is very challenging because of the factors I've mentioned. Remember, estate agents, I appreciate you might have to just over the pudding slightly when you do put the house on the market. But please, please take personal ownership of that property. Don't leave it to the next to do a price reduction in eight weeks time. I think if they're trusting you to put your house on the market with you, then, then take responsibility. And you should be when you, sh you know, if you're going to put it on at 420 and it really should be 399 or 400 then you're the one that should be saying, right, we'll try it on at 420, but I'm going to write into the sole agency agreement. We reduce it to 400 within two weeks. And, and that's a good point. I would go further. Uh, and I really would say this to anybody listening to this or watching this as an estate agent. Um, this has happened before. Markets have been like this before. And actually, one of the another key thing that you could look at is how is your value at your appraisal booking conversation going? Are you interrogating the seller probably not physically but in a in a professional manner to try to really get a gauge of their their expectations on price and if you have that number how has the seller arrived at that number it's really important before you deliver a price or an expectation to try to interrogate and, and find out as much as you can about the seller's expectations good stuff right let's move on to number of sold the contracts and we're presently standing at 23208 which is the best sale for best month best week for gross sales since the list trust budget <laughs> well that's encouraging the best week for everything since liz trust's budget isn't it okay now what is particularly interesting is this the average price of the property being sold has remained stubbornly between 347,000 and 351,000 for the last four weeks. Okay. Well, see, so there you go, 349 there. And we'll just pull up this, uh, we'll just pull up the magic screen now. Hold on, two seconds. Here we go. We'll pull up the, uh, oh, look at this. Oh. Hold on a second. You're going, getting all excited now. Okay. Right. Hold on. So you've got National Source of It, the contract on line nine here. And, they're cut, and there you go, look, these 22, 22, 22, 23. If yeah. you go back to the after, you know, before before Liz Truss's, you know, what was happening was, if you go back to 2022, in the spring, we were selling in the order of around 25 to 28,000 properties a week. And then that started to drift downwards to 24, 25 in the two months before the Liz Trust budget because affordability was kicking in with the with the with the um, first time buyers and mortgages then then Liz came and dropped that bombshell and we dropped down to average sales in the mid teens and it's slowly been creeping back up since but, I mean, you know, but, but you also know why right look at line highlight line 22 for me that's why that yeah that that is the most obvious when you look at stats and I appreciate as I said before you need you know these don't give you all the answers but you know, looking at that, those two lines in comparison, you know, there you go. All right. Well, I mean, in fact, you can actually look at line seven, sorry, because you've got, you know, it's the same thing for the week. You know, you've got increasing numbers of. Yeah. So red, red is low. Sales. Red, is, 
Yeah. So as the green as as a green green means better, red means worse. I mean, you're going to expect it in the first week in Jan that the numbers are going to be reds. But just see how things are moving across in both new instructions, price changes, and sale agrees. Right. Okay. Let's move on and look at accumulative gross sales. Let's go back to the. Uh, there you go. You should see now. Should see the turquoise lines. Is that right? Yep. And again, we are on 180,000 gross sales compared to other years in 17 or 18. You know, they are on the lowish side. I have done a comparison percentage wise on net sales because it's net sales that you're going to get paid on, boys and girls. OK. And then if they use Gazeel, they would get paid on gross sales, of course. Yes. Well, <laughs> I mean, OK, that was a little little promo there for Gazeel. But again, uh, absolutely fantastic boys and girls do check gazelle out you will get your sales through quicker and you'll have less fall throughs there you go was that a good enough promo for you mate sounded like you're on talk sport then with a uh, you know little intro there to look, the sponsor of the <laughs> <laughs> i can just try... no brian's not paid to be on this and no like, money is changing yeah. hands here no, no yeah. yeah you can buy me a bloody pint though next time it's all for the love yeah the love indeed indeed right okay um i think this is a particularly nice graph it talks about this is plotting the number of weekly gross sales week by week compared to 19 18 and 17 yeah yeah, so we're following, as we've said before, we've said many times, which is really encouraging, we're following the trend of a normal type market, which is good, albeit Ball, some higher interest right. rate. Fall throughs. So this week we've had 4,743 um, fall throughs. I had someone senior in Property Mark contact me saying he felt that, that fall throughs were on the, the rise. Now, interestingly, we'll just I'll just pull up uh, um, basically the average number of fall throughs in the, the the two months after Liz Truss's uh, fabled budget, we're in the order of seven and a half thousand a week, um, and um, slowly but surely it's been coming back. Hold on a second. I just what's I just uh, keep filling. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, at the start of um, at the start of January, we were working on the order of around five thousand one hundred, and since the uh, January, the average per month. Is, per week is 4,839. So when you see 4,073, that's not bad. The 5,299 is the average weekly fall through rate for all the last seven years. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit bold with you here, okay? Because I took umbrage to somebody that, um, as I do quite often, when people are um, umbrage, uh, umbrage, yeah. no, Sorry. no, no Sorry. you're easy going. <laughs> Showing statistics that um and and with a message behind it, an advertorial that actually is inaccurate. So there was, and I won't name names, but there was a business that promoted some statistics not long ago on one of the industry uh, morning news online paper things. Um, and said fall throughs on the decline. But it's completely inaccurate because if you compare the number, yes, the number of fall throughs are lower, as we've just seen from that graph, but they only are lower because sales are lower. I agree. So you compare the com the percentages of the sales that you know essentially the commission pot that estate agents are you know the income that they're trying to generate with a gross sale, you compare that. Now if they if they are selling less properties, they're gonna have less fall throughs on you know, in comparison. I mean, not the right measurement. The measurement is as a percentage. That's the the failure the line the failure line. What's the failure line? Is that getting better? Are we failing less or are we failing more? Well, the, the stats I have, and again, it, it's only stats and there's lies, damn lies and statistics. The average sale fall through is 24.28%. But it, but we could argue the toss whether, you know, this week it's 21. I mean, it, 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 the magic thing is this. These, the, the home buying process where whether a quarter of house sales fall through is shit. Yeah, it is. I'm saying. Here's something for your for your viewers to take home. When you're putting a sale together, okay, every individual person or transaction in that sale carries a 10% risk. So if you have one property with a seller that's not buying and a buyer that has nothing to sell, you've got the lowest risk possible for a fall through. If you add one link to a chain, either below or above your transaction, yeah, you've now got 20, you've now got a 30% risk. Yep. So you got 10% for the buyer, 10% for the seller in one property. You add another one on, you're adding another 10%, this another person, 
or below 10% with the bar at the bottom, you've now got 30% risk. So each link of the chain that you add increases your risk by over 10%. So when you're putting a deal together, if you've got one property with a seller and buyer, you've got an, uh, roughly a 20% risk of failure. If you've got a buyer who sold the property to a first-time buyer and your seller's moving out, no, no onward, you've got a 30% risk of a failure and so on. If you have a seller that's buying and a buyer that's selling, 40% risk. Five links in the chain, 50% risk. Never thought of that, eh? Not being discussed with customers. Probably because they because the agent will go with the one who sell who's basic. I'm a bit. You can wash my mouth out here, but but they'll go with the agent. They'll go with the person who's using their mortgage broker. Disgusting. There's lots of reasons, yeah, but may, mainly because it's a lack of education, Chris. I mean, boys and girls. I don't know about you, but there are fifteen, sixteen. Well, depends who you talk to. Thirteen and a half thousand companies, not f firms, not uh, branches. It's fifteen thousand. Some people say. I don't know. Okay, let's let's assume that the corporates all have their own trainers. So we'll take it down to thirteen thousand estate agents. Let's just be on the. I don't know more than ten estate agency trainers to look after thirteen thousand estate agents. I mean, every man and his dog in Australia. Is a, is a trainer why don't we have training when was the last time you sent your team your negotiators and your valuers on not training but development i mean you used to be a trainer didn't you yeah why, well, why don't we train our people you know or we just used to the fact is that we used to work for countrywide nothing wrong with countrywide because they were fucking good at training yep. they were they were that's where you know when people feared countrywide can you remember those days i was there yeah, yeah i know um Absolutely. but just we don't train our staff. God's sake. Sorry, I'm getting you know, I'm getting on my high holes today. <laughs> so how long have we been running this this your this program today? What is the current amount of time we've had to get to this point on your show? About half an hour. Half an hour, 30 minutes, yeah. Okay. There's been 14 fall throughs in the last 30 minutes. Awful. While we've been on air, there's been 14 properties falling through as have fallen through. Taken from your stats that you've shown on week on the last week. The 4,743 fall throughs units that have fallen through, that is one every two minutes. And that's costing people's money. It's not a, it's costing us money, it's costing buyers money, it's costing it's costing everyone money. And at, the end of the, and at the end of the day, when the average sale time has gone from 12 weeks to 19 weeks in the last 10 years, it should be going the other way. We're and talking about you know, we're talking about the 60% of people who sell with a second agent. I mean, it's no surprise, right? If that is true. Um, because if you think about it, if you ask yourself, is my seller going to be happier with me when they've had a fall through or without a fall through? It's a pretty straightforward answer. So if you can prevent rather than cure, you'll retain more business and make more money and move more people, which is what we're supposedly here to do. Because estate agents, I'm going to make a sweeping statement here and I'm going to get shot out. Estate agent. The vast majority of estate agency valuers who are employed care more about listing than selling the house. Well, I think it goes further than that. I think the majority of people, in my opinion, um, rightly or wrongly, again, not tarnishing everybody, but generally focus more on the property than they do the individuals that are actually trying to move. Let's get off that soapbox, mate, because the two of us on it is going to be start creaking. Right. OK, now this this if there's something that is bothering me at the moment is this mm. not house prices. Estate agents should not be worried about house prices. I've got some data on house prices, which I'm going to share in a bit. OK, but it's the number of transactions. Now, 21 and 22 were were city, not city, but very strange years. So we can't compare. So. And I know 2020 got off to a good start because we had the Boris bounce. But just comparing to 17, 18 and 19, 136,000 net sales going into the pipeline. That's a 91 or we're just 10 percent off the average. That's 10 percent less properties going into your pipeline. That um, is that's that's scaring me. It is very, yeah, it is scary. And it's exactly now we've seen this. What the point I was trying to make earlier on is that it's all well and good thinking we've got lower numbers of fall throughs, but it's, you know, relative to the lower number of sales. Um, 
I mean, this is a problem, okay? When you think about your, your, what was your average house price, 429,000 listed price, something like that? Yep. Earlier on, well, you're talking, let's say, worst case scenario, an agent's got 1%. That's £4,000 per unit of revenue that is being dropped. Now, I appreciate that agents back in the summer, the, 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 the summer of last year, we go, ah, doesn't matter. We'll resell it in an hour, probably for more money. Well, that's great, but you ain't doing that now. Okay, so if that four grand comes out of your pipeline, I'd argue, first of all, have you changed anything about your booking policy on your sales, which can spot and identify, forget Gazelle or, or anything else. If, you're, if you've got a robust booking policy where you're investigating your buyer thoroughly on behalf of your client. Well, then... actually, well, actually ring every single estate agent in the chain and not just the one behind you. Well, yeah, but it goes further than that, you know, really, you know, um, challenging the mortgage situation of people, you know, diving in this, I suspect, with the greatest of respect, that that has not changed an awful lot, because we are racing to get a sold slip on the bloody board to try and win more market share. And actually, it's just, you know, it's back to this point of there's a hole in the bucket. Okay. And people are trying to fill it when they need to fix it first. And when a market changes, does your business change with it? Have you changed your processes, your procedures? You know, one of the other questions I've got for people to ask themselves is, you know that the pricing situation is different. We know that the interest rates are different. We know all these things. Have we changed our advice to our clients when we're on appraisals? And then furthermore, the process of booking a sell, identifying a buyer, qualification. How robust is that in your business? Are you doing something different, stronger, more robust? Because you can see through shows like Chris's, the market speaking to you. And if you haven't, I'd urge you to have a look at that as soon as possible. I'm just going to whiz through these very quickly because there's plenty more meat. This is just, and these are available on the downloads. If you go to my YouTube channel on this particular description, you can download all these graphs for your own benefit. Um, and again, we've talked about an awful lot about these. Um, uh, but you can uh, dive down. We can move on and look at the national stats. We've looked at the national, we've looked at this a number of times, uh, but I think, but again, these are available. Now we can actually start delving. Now let's just spend a couple of minutes on the regional stuff, Brian, if you don't yep. mind. And yep. I'll just pull that up now. Okay. Uh, you actually didn't see all those other graphs. I didn't share them, did I? Right. <laughs> Never mind the thoughts that the thought they're available to download on the link. Have a look at them. It's some nice ratios that you might want to find useful. Right then. So let's go and look at the regional figures. And we start off with the East Midlands and East Anglia. Green is good. Red is bad. And I think you, you can call it quite clearly see here that the East Midlands and East Anglia, uh, East of England, uh, you know, green is good. It's going in the right direction. And that's always the point. I mean, you know, looking from my days in agency, um, looking at statistics, it was always I'd look for the color, you know, the color code first. If it's green, tick. Still investigate it. Still look at it. Because you can make it greener, uh, and or or in fact, <clears throat> good point. Still look at the green. Right, you know, pat yourself on the back, of course, but look at the green because you want to maintain the green. So what have we been doing that's made it go green? Let's keep that going and let's you know, train and promote that. Those those processes that clearly are working for us. Um, Indeed, so yeah. uh, one, one that doesn't appear on the graphs, but is very important to me, is the percentage difference between the listing price and the sale yeah. price to give you an idea. Yeah. And again, you can quite clearly see here that that's been hovering around single figures or early teens, which is pretty good. For those of you that the, that will never be the same because the smaller price properties have a greater propensity to sell. So the, that that figure will always be slightly lower the sale price. It's when the gap gets bigger. We've got some more interesting stats to show you a little bit later in the show. East of England, again, you can't really say much more than what we said about the East Midlands. So I'll just go through these. And these are available to download if you want to look at them in detail. OK, uh, inner London. Now, look at inner London. And the bit that scares me here, the greens are going well. I know we've got from fall throughs, but again, the numbers are not huge. It's the percentage difference. It's here. Percentage difference yeah. between, you know, you know, the average listing price is around a million, but the stuff that's selling is around 750,000. And inner London is south, the SW postcode, SE postcode, E, N, N, W, W, and then the central EC and the WCs. Also, <laughs> sorry, a bit, but, um, <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, that scares me. 32% difference. 
Um, I know London is a world to itself. We had Ben Madden on last week and he said you shouldn't be too worried. But that is quite a difference, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, you know, repeating myself um, from a few weeks back when we looked at it, which is 36 um, percent <clears throat> larger properties coming on. Are these the properties that are being reduced and then selling? So are you getting a £996,000 listing that's then being reduced to 860 and sold for 750 Or are you listing at 996 and your stock that you've had already at 750 to 800000 Is that the stuff that's selling? I've got, I, don't, I hope the state agents weren't overvaluing by £250,000 at this sort of price range. I just think, I mean, we've got some stats, on national stats on this, is that the, the lower price properties has a greater propensity to sell. And we've got some good stats on that in a second. Uh, the northeast is just plodding along quite nicely on there. Uh, we'll again just shout up now. Out of London, it's like chalk and cheese compared to inner London. Yeah, going along quite nicely. Estate agents being sensible with their listing to sell price ratio. Scotland is Scotland again. Scotland has a weird way of nothing weird because I am a bit Scottish. Um, it, so the numbers will always look better in Scotland because of the way their legal system works. Southeast and southwest again, greens all off to the right. We can't complain about this, can we? No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It looks smart. These look like normal, sort of kind of normal stats, if you like. Okay, Wales, Wales, and West Midlands. Again, nothing really to to. And then Yorkshire, again, um, just showing that you know things are plodding along quite nicely. Um, interestingly, um, I've looked at and again. Won't spend too long on this one, but choose, look at the, this is the gross sales in terms of the percentage of listings. Chris, just, uh, just help me out here. So have you, is this percentage as a straight number of sales that week compared to the number of listings that week? Or is it yes. a percentage of sales as to the carried stock, the actual available? No, it, uh, it's, it's gross sales that week versus listings sales that week. I've just managed to secure the data yep. for stock levels and yeah. it's going to take uh, it's going to take a good day to upload it to the spreadsheet okay. and then we'll be and then that will be a better a judgment but um this um sales that fell through and again we can see here that 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 this that the the worst area seems to be out of london at the moment with the sales that are falling through interesting don't you think yep yeah absolutely yeah but in a london the sales seem to be a little bit stronger Interesting. Not a huge amount of difference here, but again, let's not spend too long here. These are all available to download that you can use using YouTube on the link and you can use it for compare and comparison against your own area. I must stress to you that you, uh, I ask that you do not use these uh, graphs on social media. They're just for your own personal benefit. Just a quick question. Why have you got, just go back for me. Yeah. Why have you got Scotland in red at 9.49? That looks like that I've done the wrong. I've done the wrong conditional formatting. <laughs> That's all right. I just thought you might know something I don't know. No, 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 no. no green, there's one blob of no, red. I'm, like, oh, I'm down actually, Scotland, but actually... I was rushing it last night at half seven because we had the okay. morning uh, to to get the show out. Yeah, thanks for spotting. At least you know that. I'd, I could say I did that deliberately to see if you were paying attention. Okay, well, I do read them. And I do what I do. I'm paying attention. Yeah. Okay, then uh, price changes as a percentage of listings. Again, we've had someone from senior from the industry saying, I'd rather you actually see price changes as a percentage of stock. We talked about that earlier, and we're going to try and bring some graphs in in the next week or so. And then net sales as a percentage of listings. Again, uh, just a nice a nice uh, graph there. Um, but, it, but the, the you know, it's, it is to give a true, accurate picture of what's actually happening in a branch. You really want to look at adding these percentages of sales and price reductions and so on and so on as a percentage of stock. Which, which, as I said, we've got the stock figures and we're going to look at that. Okay. Right. Okay. This is, I think this is a particularly interesting uh, graph, which I published yep. this morning. We stuff, didn't we, a while back. That's good. Um, and this is the blue is all the stock that's presently on the market split down by price range. Yep. And the red and the orange is the all the properties that have sold since January the first split down by price range? Okay, and yeah, so 60, blue is what's available and orange is um, what's sold. Sales sold, yeah. Sixty-five percent of the sales have sold below three hundred and fifty thousand pounds, whilst only fifty-three percent of the stock that's on the market is under three hundred and fifty thousand pounds. 
And these stats, just so you're aware, boys and girls, and you all know this is coming, but I have to because they graciously give me these stats at no cost, is all these stats come from the 20EA Insights platform, which is available to estate agents in your locality. And you can get these stats and you can judge yourself where you where you are in the marketplace. Um, yeah, it's a very useful bit of kit, that. It is. Right. Now, this is particularly interesting, is this. Then now, this is experimental data, which is not available um, at the moment. And it's just something I'm playing with at the moment. But as a judge of where we presently stand in the marketplace, because whenever a property comes on the market, it needs an EPC. We know the address. We can find out the, the square meterage. Uh, call me, I'm 51, which means I work in square footage. Like, square you know, foot, yeah, feet and inches, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Pound shillings and pence, as our man would say. <laughs> but we converted it. So so basically, these are the national figures. I do have some regional figures as well. But basically, what happened was in, uh, so the blue line is the average price pay, average price listed. for every listing that came on the market. And, uh, and I know you're going to probably say something about pound per square foot. It's not... A, let me say a bit, then you can shoot at me. You can shoot me. All right. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell by the way you're looking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's not perfect, but the bottom line is this: is that the blue line is the average pound per square foot. The bigger the house, the more expensive it's going to be. Okay. Okay. Hold the line. Hold. I'll wait. Wait. Now that's going to go up and down. The price paid, sale agreed price, is the orange line. And as you can see, between late spring, the average sale price was three hundred and forty-six pounds and sixty-two pence per square foot, and she dropped to three hundred and thirty-two pounds and nine pence, which is a four percent drop, which matches almost identically to what the Halifax have said. Okay, but interestingly, every single area it has as now this could be a you know. You know, is this a dead cat bounce? And we know there are people out there that whenever it goes down, it goes up. Go, ooh, dead cat, dead cat bounce. Okay, we don't know. We have to wait and see. Okay, but fundamentally, she's nicked up a bit. But there is your house price drop, boys and girls. I can't see ten percent, but you can see what's happening in the marketplace. But my my biggest fear, and we'll come back to these, is this: is the gap between the two lines. Because if the gap, if you're listing at a higher price and the stuff that's selling is going down, that's proving that you're overvaluing. Okay, right. Well, well not necessarily overvaluing. It also well, could mean that you're listing houses in a market position that where there's no buyers. Right. And, Fair. And, yeah. Okay. Then. Right. So, it's, okay. It's, again, there's no no answer questions to look at in your own individual region. Right. Area. Brian, release the kraken. Go. Well, I'm not going to do that because you know pound per square foot. I used to you know do a lot of um, appraisals based on that, particularly in, um, in my days in London. Um, and obviously with developers, they're often keen to know you know what is your pound per square foot. And I think it is a metric that every agent should know about in their own town, no matter what, in case you use it. And sometimes it's good to give it as a comparison. The danger with relying on an appraisal model that is just based on square footage, of course, is what's the square footage of the brilliant view that you've got over that valley or the great position on the right side of the road compared all of, you know, et cetera, et cetera, which obviously always plays a factor in, you know, what a property market is, uh, 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 what a marketing price achieves rather than a purely financial model. Um, but it's good I mean, to know, really good to know. I mean, interestingly, we'll just, we'll just pull up uh, a little graph, few graphs here. We've been doing this uh, uh, for the regions and that's the Southeast. So you should be able to see the graph there. And again, I would just want people to look at the gap there's the southwest again, much tighter. Okay, uh, Wales again, it's the gap that worries me. Um, we'll just go and look at some. Uh, I know you guys in London don't, you know, the world just stops at the end of the M25. There's outer London, bit of a gap forming there. So, so there, is, there is no end to the M25 rather because it's a loop, it's inside. <laughs> or outside, you know. Okay, um, let's just have a quick look. Northeast again, nice and tight, but they're doing well. Again, there's a lesson there, boys and girls. There's inner London, there's quite a gap there. Mm. Okay, which again matches the figures that we were talking about there, right? Okay, um, I tell you what, I think that's the end of the regional stats. And again, we don't want to bore people to death and, and spend two hours going through each location, but you can download the stats from 20EA. Sorry. 
the downloaded stats from YouTube. And as I said, all the stats have come from 20 EA Insights platform, which you can go and buy yourself. Do not mention my name because I'm not on commission or I'm just a bit of a fanboy of them. Right then, Brian, we're going to now finish off with Focus on a Town. Okay. So um, where are we going, Brian? Where are we going? Talk to me. Well, I thought we were going to look at Farnborough. We will go to Farnborough. Famous Farnborough. In, in sunny um, Hampshire? Hampshire, yeah. Good snowy stuff. Hampshire probably today. Probably. Okay. But again, people uh, people will be filmed, watching this at the weekend, so it'll be sunny and lovely and gorgeous and, and beautiful. Right then. Okay, let me share my screen. And the Farnborough is the postcode of... GU14. GU14. You know your postcodes. Or should we call I you do. Postman Pat? Well, no, I don't know about that. I, I know Farnborough because I used to work there many, many, many moons ago. It's where I started it's my true. agency career in 1987. <gasps> oh, dear. Right then, here we go. Okay, so first thing we always do is take a step back and look uh, at using the, the um, 20EA Insights platform. And we look at the last two years plus whatever this year is okay so we're doing the first of jan 21 to the 7th of march okay first off we're looking at the number of uh, the new new instructions so the again 21 is the turquoise color blue is 22 and and 23 is the red so you can quite clearly see here that new instructions are on the rise okay and there's more house on the market obviously we're in early march I'm um, assuming that the turquoise for 2021 obviously is the full March. Even it is the it's, full it's, March. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. We we are here now because obviously we're on the 8th of March filming this yeah. on the 8th of March. So that's got time to catch up. Yeah. Um, um, we'll just have a quick look at sales, the sales of the contracts. And again, the sales, you know, so that's, that's interesting. Look, new yeah. instructions. Well, if you just hold on new instruction for me. Now look at the, if you look at the year, you got one, two, three, right? So you've got the upward trajectory on instructions in January, February, and you would expect, because you've got a different set of numbers in March in terms of um, 21 versus 22. 22 obviously dropped, whereas in January, February in 22, it went up. So it'd be very interesting to see what this looks like at the end of March. Is it going to buck the trend, so to speak, or is it going to be the same? And are we going to start to see a downward trend? I suspect it'll be the other, other way. Good stuff. Um, we'll just have a quick look. Uh, we'll just nip in and look have a quick look at sales of the contracts. And again, we've got a downward trend as we would expect. Okay, because there are less houses selling, which is what we've talked about. Okay, let's go back to new instructions because that's what it's all about. And we'll start off with let's go and look at bridges. So bridges. Um, so let's just before we the average price of a property that's come onto the market in the last. Um, Two and a bit years has been 381,000. So we go for bridges, they're at 350. So whilst they have 20% of the marketplace, they seem to be their, their medium point tends to be just below the average by about 10%. Okay. I don't know if you know any of these firms, but just shout. Yeah, I, know, I know bridges very, very well, actually. They're a, a very good firm, um, well managed, well run, some good individuals, but and they position themselves you know, where they want to be, which is in the market that moves, right? The majority market, which is Indeed. a good place to be. Romans, which are a, a corporate estate agent, and again, their market share at 12%, there seems to be going in a slight downward direction. I think silly, but yeah. again, in a slight, you know, but again, that, that could be down to a multitude of sins, but it's, you know, uh, and their price is 359, which again, very similar to the average, again, very similar to Bridges. Greg James, let's go and look at Greg James. Again, at 10%, they seem to be, their market share seems to be an upward trajectory. I can't say that word. Um, and again, I don't think, okay. Uh, and they're at 390. So they seem to be a little bit uh, towards the average. Let's go and look at McKenzie. And again, they're, uh, they've are they got 8% market share. But again, that seems to be, you know, pretty up and down on that one. Prospect, we are a, a large, a small, small corporate uh run very well and again they're at 6.4 but again their trajectory seems to be going in an upward direction generally and again looking at the price um 317 very similar interestingly i find that the the price is you know everyone seems to be getting everything don't they there's not there's not one agent that are going for the posh ones yeah there's not an awful lot of um you know the value the farmer's farmer's market is um condensed with very similar price property across quite a large geographical area 
Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of hot spots of what you might call prime property, but the majority of it is, you know, um, mid market, very very strong and very positive mid market town. I mean, I, I've just done the I've just done the um, the, the the upper quartile, which is seven hundred fifty thousand and above. And there, there, you know, there, there doesn't appear to be one prominent agent in the upper quartile, but then the numbers aren't particularly great either, are they? Yeah, that doesn't do the comparison without new build. Actually, if you dropped out new build, what does that does it do much to the statistics? Not, at, not much at all. No. Okay. Okay. Should we move on to the next screen? Okay. Good stuff. Okay. So, uh, one of my favourite screens is how efficient an estate agent is. So we're going to ignore new instructions, new instruction market share or sort of the contract. The, my favorite bit is exchanged versus withdrawn. OK, if you think about it, it doesn't necessarily what, what comes in at the top is very important. It's what comes out the bottom, which is the most important thing, because you're either exchanging and earning or you're withdrawing and you're losing. Is that a fair comment to make? Absolutely. OK, so therefore. If bridges for every hundred houses that they put on the market, they will exchange contracts on fifty-eight point four of them. Greg James sixty-nine, Romans sixty-four, Mackenzie Smith seventy-five. So I know what I would be doing if I was competing against bridges. That you know, Mrs. Miggins, if you put your, if I was Mackenzie Smith, if you put my house, my, my your house on the market with me you have a 75.7% chance of actually moving whilst with Bridges 58.4. Well, the, it's interesting because the majority of people um, that you will come across as an estate agent are risk averse, right? like a lot of us um, you know, as humans generally. Very few people that are the opposite of that. Um, the risk, and these are the interesting statistics that are never displayed you know, to the public on any portal, to the public via things like Get Agent um, or the agents themselves, understandably. But actually, they are in, they are incredibly powerful tools when you're using logical certainty to present to somebody at a point of instruction, and that I would argue would could be the differentiator between your accurate pricing and someone who's overvaluing. You, you know, know, if you're on a level you know, playing field, you've got a one hell of an opportunity to to disprove other agents when you're providing statistical evidence on pricing and success versus presenting marketing is very very hard then to discount someone's price expectations if you don't have the stats to back it up i mean to give you an idea and again this is nothing against bridges so please don't shoot the message you know but just this is the numbers but the simple fact is is if you're greg james romans or mackenzie smith you have a 29 but up to a 29 percent greater chance of actually moving with us as opposed to you know and I think when we're in a marketplace where we have to differentiate ourselves, yes, you have to do the fancy videos, the nice brochures and all that stuff. But when you've got cold, hard facts, which basically says, hey, this is the, this is the, these are your numbers, you're more likely to move. Okay, let's move on and talk about what actually the agents get. Okay, so this is particularly interesting here is this. If... Bridges, Greg, James, Romans, Mackenzie Smith, all of them put the same house on the market. What would they actually achieve for it? OK. And the simple fact is this, is that Bridges would achieve 405, Greg, James, 405, Romans, 425. So does that mean that chancellors would achieve 440 for 10 percent above or 11.31 percent above the price that they're listing at? Yeah. Well, now remember this lies, damn lies, and statistics, and that that and again we're basic. The way this works, and there is this, is chancellors have only sold sixteen houses, and there might be an anomaly in in the automated valuation model because the way it works is this: the 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 twenty EA platform will do an automated valuation model on every one property that they sell that they comes on the market. You know, almost like a Valpal figure, but it isn't Valpal; it's their own. And then they will see what it comes on the market for. So therefore, the original listing price, oh, sorry, the original listing price versus um, the original listing price versus um, the AVM. Um, the, yeah, the AVM. So again, this is almost like the get agent price. What do you put it on the market for? So again, Chancellor's 11% over the asking price. And but again, I, asking, right? So, you know, if you were looking at a layman looking at that, would think that more well, Chancellor's would get value. 
well, but over value, yeah. And what are they selling yeah. it for? Yeah, well, there, 400, but we haven't got this stat. I haven't got the price achieved stat here. That's why I have to take this with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Okay. I would I would only trust this if this price achieved figure from the land registry was it. So therefore, bridges overvalued by 3.78, but but then the price then they achieve is 2.2% below what they, they put it on the market for. So the net figure of 3.78 minus 2.24 means that a 400,000 pound house, 1.32 by the way, as you can see here, means that they would sell a house for 405. Greg James would sell the same house at 405 and Romans would sell the house at 425. Yeah, so you're basically saying there that every single estate agent in Farnborough, with the exception of Mitchell and Partners, Martin and Co, um, Belvoir and Hamptons and Michael Usher sell above the asking price. Yes. How is that true? Because remember, we're dealing with data here that's a year old. Right. And okay. is, this, is this on the basis that 68% of the stats are crap? <laughs> okay yeah okay so remember the mark we were selling over the asking price because this is a year old data this this is going to change as we go in we're selling for below the asking price all these that these this is this is old data but the yeah. simple fact is this this is data that proves on the doorstep that you're getting more okay yeah, yeah. it's up to you how you use it okay now now interestingly the last slide talks about how quick a prop you sell a property and how quick you get them through which is a, a good news for you because you like to talk about this stuff and well, again yeah, i do because it's it's obviously i mean i like to talk about stuff with estate agents that is 100 percent relevant to their customers that's all that's all i go on about these days you know because that's all i've ever I, all i was taught and all i learned from my years of agency focus on the people help them move the property is second to that um and um and this is exactly that everybody who is selling a property or has ever sold a property you tend to find if you had a stressometer from the day they went on the market to the day they actually moved it kind of does that and then you get a buyer and then it kind of does that you know okay and, but the the transactional period of a property sale is the bit that a lot of agents don't actually educate the client on or focus them on i mean and, that, and that's where we earn our money isn't it that's Not exactly. money, and that's what matters to them you know right. I mean, this is interesting. The the average length of time it takes to sell a house, you know, Osborne's at 115 days and Mackenzie Smith at 148. Yep. And what would be interesting, we haven't got time today, is to compare the fall through rate versus. Well, what? Hold on. You, a just, you just saw that on the on the other screen. Yes. You got that on the screen. Indeed. Well, um, that's the end of the sh that. I think we'll that's the end of the show, Brian. Um, final two minutes final thoughts for estate agents in the current marketplace well it's been a feisty one and i'm not going to apologize for that because actually you know if we're here to help people which is a, which is exactly what this um you know what you're doing here and giving up your time to do as i am um then i hope people can get something out of this that they can take away and sometimes you've got to be a bit robust you've got to challenge a few of these things to get people to understand them but it's like i said earlier on I, you know, really the key thing here is we can see what the market's doing. You are showing people all over the country the message of the market, right? So the so the the takeaway is always look at your town, like we just done with Farnborough, look at your own area, where do you compare with that? And and ask yourself, have you adapted for the market? And if you have, have your team. If someone's if if, an, if a business is calling 25 estate agents and only two are asking for evaluation. That's regression. That's not progression. So are we going back, backwards as an industry? I suspect in quite a few places we are. Uh, I would probably be so bold as to suggest that the two that did actually ask were probably corporate businesses because they are super hot on that. Am I right? They were. They were. Well, don't see them to say who they were, but... They, they, wait for it. They were online estate agents. <laughs> wow. And there you go. Okay. That's okay. interesting. So, yeah, that. have you changed your processes? And if not, have a look at train, it. Train, train, train. Develop, develop, develop. The market is changing. You can't change that, but you can change the way that you adapt to it. And profit from it. Mystery shop. If you they, you know, if you've got a mate in another town, get your mate to mystery shop. You and your age and your competitors and vice versa. Find out how they how your 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 team are dealing with it. Because at the end of the day, everyone says we're in a people business, but do we actually train and develop our people? 
Brian, you've been amazing. I'll be inviting you back in a month's time because your insight is sublime. Be nicer next time. <laughs> no, no, no. We like we like feisty. Uh, we like to be challenged. Uh, and I hope you watching, thank you for watching this. If you've got any comments, good or constructive or even bad, then, then put them in the comments. Thank you for your time today for watching and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for watching. Thank you.